Hi students, if you're watching this video, you're preparing for the geometry SOL test. Here we're looking at SOL number five, our first SOL in the series of triangle lessons. And here, there's four different parts to this SOL. In this video, we're gonna look at the first two. Part A says that we need to order the sides by length when given the angle measures. And part B says we need to order the angles by degree measure when given the side lengths. So here we're just putting the angles in order from least to greatest or greatest to least, or putting the sides in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. So let's go through a couple practices um, of something that I think you'll remember very quickly. Here, I just have a generic scalene triangle. And what's happening here is I've got three different angles, the large angle, the small angle, so this would be the medium angle. And the thing to learn within this SOL is that the smaller the angle, the shorter the side. The larger the angle, the longer the side. And that's because as you, um, let's use these pencils here as an example can measure this angle. As you widen an angle, the side that would connect those two other sides is going to get longer and longer and longer. And as you close up the angle, that third side, the side across from the angle, is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. This is called the hinge theorem. Think of it that way, the hinge of a door. The wider the angle, the longer the side. So this teeny tiny angle over here, the smallest angle being produced, produces the shortest side of the triangle. Whereas the largest angle here produces the longest side of the triangle. So that would leave the medium angle over here, that's not marked, would produce a medium side of a triangle. Maybe we should write that in also. This would be the medium angle. We don't know what the measurements are, but it's somewhere between the short side and the long side. So then this would be the medium side. Okay, let's see if we can do a couple practices with this. So, one thing to look for is make sure you're reading very carefully. I've bolded these special words in here to tell us what we're trying to do. It says, list the angles from smallest to shortest. List the angles from smallest to shortest. So we wanna make sure we're writing out angles here. So if I'm looking for the smallest angle but I'm given the sides, I actually have to identify the shortest side. Here's my shortest side, 56 millimeters is the shortest side of this triangle. I'm gonna put an S out here for short. So now I have to think which angle in the picture created that side. So I'm gonna grab my pencil and pen here again to try and draw this out for you. Q, point Q, and point P are the end points of this side, and they are created by this angle over here. If angle R was wider, point P would be further from point Q. If angle R was smaller, it would be closer to point Q. So it's angle R that's creating that side. Angle R goes with that side. So we know that angle R is the smallest angle. Okay, the next length here in the order from smallest to largest would be the 64 millimeter side. Okay, and using my pencils again to demonstrate this, point R and point P are the two endpoints of that angle, of that side, and they are being created by angle Q on the opposite side of the triangle. So angle Q is what is creating the length of side PR. 
So angle Q is going to be my medium angle. Finally, we have to identify the longest side, which is really the only side left, the 70 millimeter side here. That's going to be our longest side. So I'm going to put an L here for long. And the only angle we have left unidentified is angle P. So angle P, if you follow out the sides moving from the vertex P, goes through Q and R. So angle P is what creates side QR. Therefore, angle P is going to be the largest angle. What my students do is they draw these lines connecting the smallest side to the smallest angle, connecting the medium side to the medium angle, and connecting the longest side to the largest angle. And that kind of helps organize that. I'm going to move to this example on the right. This is sort of working the opposite direction. Here we were given the side lengths and we named the angle measures. And here we're given the angle measures and we're asked to list the sides from shortest to longest. So this time we need to be writing out the side measures from shortest to longest. So first things first, I have a missing angle over here I need to find. And we know that the triangle sum theorem says that the three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I take 180 degrees, and subtract away the two angles that are given, whatever's left is going to give me the measure of angle P here. So 180 degrees minus 56 degrees minus 73 degrees leaves me with 51 degrees for angle P. That means that angle P is the smallest of the three angles. Okay, angle 3 is the smallest of the three. So going through the triangle, out the other side, the opposite side is side WN. And this is going to be the shortest side. Shortest side is across from the smallest angle. The medium size angle over here is 56 degrees. So moving across the triangle to the opposite side, I'd be identifying side NP. NP. And finally, the largest angle in the set is 73 degrees here. And its opposite side is WP. So that has to be the longest side, W. P. So this says side WN is smaller than side WNP, which is smaller than side WP. Short, medium, long. These last two examples um, have a little more work to do. They apply a little bit of critical thinking to finish the problem, but we're using the same concepts. Going to the bottom left here. read through this problem. Pine Street, Rector Street, and Taylor Street intersect to form a triangular shaped park as shown. What is the order of the streets from longest to shortest? Okay, if it's asking us the order of the streets, it's asking us for sides from longest to shortest. So I believe that this question is almost identically set up to this question, however, they've formed it in the way of a word problem, okay? Here we've been given these two angles. We need to first find the third missing angle. And we can do that again using the triangle sum theorem. A total of 180 degrees. They've already identified 64 degrees and 54 degrees, so the leftover will be the missing angle measure. 180 degrees minus 64 degrees minus 54 degrees leaves me with 62 degrees for this missing angle. 
Now, this time the question is asking me to identify the streets from longest to shortest. So the first angle I have to identify is the largest angle. That way I can find the longest side that is across from the largest angle. That would put Rector Street as the longest street. The medium angle is 62 degrees, and Pine Street is across from that 62 degree angle, so that puts Pine Street as the medium side length. And then across from our 54 degree angle, our smallest angle is Taylor Street, which means Taylor Street is the shortest street. Something to notice about the way our answer is written is now these are greater than signs and that goes with longest to shortest. Rector Street is longer than Pine Street, which is longer than Taylor Street. We've got to pay attention to our signs. Okay, here's our very last example in this set. We've got triangle MNP with no measurements on it at all. It kind of looks like an equilateral triangle. Well, here it tells us that side MN is smaller than side NP, which is smaller than side MP. So while it doesn't give us any measurements, it does give us the order of the sides. MN is the smallest, so this is the short side. NP is the next length, so this is our medium side, and MP is the largest, so this is the long side. It says list the angles from largest to smallest, largest to smallest. So first identify the longest side. Across from that side is going to be the largest angle because the largest angle would create the longest side. So angle N is the largest angle. The medium side is side NP. Across from that side is angle M. So angle M is our medium angle. And then finally, the shortest side is MN, and across from MN would be our smallest angle, which is angle P. So angle N is greater than angle M, which is greater than angle P. Thank you for watching this video about the first two parts of SOLG5, and come back for the other two parts.